We have compiled questions from our viewers about the COVID vaccine trials. So Dr. Smith, the first question for you, many people want to know what are the ingredients in the vaccines? Well, in the ones that are currently under investigation in the U.S., two are RNA vaccines, meaning that they're um, addressing the genetic code of the virus. One is a uh, attenuated virus, meaning that the virus is non-reproductive and that uh, stimulates a response. And one is using a, a piece of protein that is introduced into the cell by another innocuous virus. So that there are, are different um, technologies all being investigated. There also are others to come that just use a piece of protein that has an adjunct, another compound to help it stimulate a response. So we're, there are multiple different methodologies currently under investigation. Another person wanting to know, what is the point of having a placebo in the trial? Well, the, the placebo group in these initial trials is critical to knowing if the vaccine works or not. Since we do not have any effective vaccine, we um, randomize people so that we don't know, they don't know whether they got the real vaccine or the placebo. Once there have been a certain number of people develop COVID in the trials, they will then look at those individuals and determine if they were on the real vaccine or the placebo. And when there is a 75, if there is a 75% reduction, then they will be able to approach the FDA for tentative emergency approval. And to follow up on that, another question, why should I participate if there is that chance that I just get the placebo? Well, uh, you're, it's always a concern. However, um, my feeling is that having a chance at getting a vaccine, even if it's 50%, and the likelihood of some protection is a whole lot better than 0% of getting any protection. Plus, we have to have these trials um, and the development of these vaccines before life can get back to any semblance of normal. Let's talk about side effects now. The next question, how many people are having bad side effects compared to good? Well, uh, a significant percentage of the people that get the vaccine are having um, minor symptoms that's expected with vaccines. Uh, sore arm, just generally feeling bad, uh, some fever, um, and this generally is gone within 24 hours. It responds to Tylenol, and that is the vast, vast majority. There have been a few um, more concerning side effects and has actually resulted in a, a pause in two of the trials while those side effects were investigated very thoroughly and as much information as possible about the vaccines and all the people in the studies were reviewed and then the FDA and the European authorities um, have chosen to reopen these. Our next viewer question, will President Trump decide on the vaccine or people who really know what they are talking about? President Trump does not decide on the vaccine. The vaccine, there is a well-established approval process within the FDA that will determine when the vaccine is uh, possibly able to be approved and that process it cannot be altered by the president or anyone else and uh, it's well established and it's it's professionals that evaluate vaccines and drugs as their job 
Next question, why are they, and at this point we are assuming they are the pharmaceutical companies, why are they being protected from liability? Well, the, what has happened here in order to get these vaccines out more rapidly is that in a normal development process, we would do the first part of the study in the, and look at that data in its entirety over several months not just the safety data, and then decide what chance the vaccine has to work and um, decide whether it's commercially viable with the risk and the benefits to proceed with its development. Then they would do phase two, look at the same information, and then proceed, not just at the safety, but at the whole uh, group of, of information, the antibodies, everything else, and then they would go on to phase three. By doing it this way, there are, are months of delays to do the entire do, um, database analysis to, to get the vaccine levels in the blood, to get all the antibody levels. A lot of information has to be obtained very quickly. Um, so that what is done with Operation Warp Speed is that the government has said, um, we understand that this vaccine may not work, so we're willing to help fund the cost of it and to um, indemnify you against the, the risk from this because we are going at a, at a faster pace than normal. However, the part of the data that is important to us for safety reasons, there are no shortcuts being taken there. That data is being analyzed thoroughly and ongoing and um, probably even more intensely in the early stages than um, in a routine trial. The second part of that process is that the government is underwriting the cost of producing um, several hundred million doses of vaccines before they even know if it works. So that even though the pharmaceutical companies are assuming part of that financial risk, the government is also doing so, which enables them to have several hundred million doses available if the vaccine is effective, rather than waiting until they know that the vaccine is going to work and then to start producing it. Are COVID-19 vaccines being tested on the medically and elderly vulnerable for a documented response? Absolutely. In the early phase studies, you want to take your healthiest individuals and make sure that it, it's safe and that, that it's giving appropriate antibody responses. But then in these large phase three trials with um, 30,000 individuals like in Moderna, 44,000 likes in Pfizer, you have the um, ability to include elderly, to include people with all the underlying high risk conditions and that's preferred. We also are making a real push to recruit minorities because they are the highest risk population groups. And so all of those are being done. And in fact, in um, one of the studies, they're even allowing HIV subjects who have a good CD4 count. Next question, why are why have some vaccine trials been paused? You touched on this a little earlier. What, what well, can you add? When there, the two trials that have been paused have been paused because there was a side effect that was unanticipated, was not something that, that is routinely seen with the high incidence in vaccine trials. And so they have gone back and looked at all the data to make sure there are, are no signals, no indication that something bad is happening that we have missed. 
This pauses happen all the time in drug development and it's just a sign that uh, safety first is being maintained and that the process is working because any time you don't have a good understanding of what is going on, you stop, you analyze all the data possible, and then you get the, the best experts you can find to review all this and determine if it is truly safe to go forward. So that is exactly what has happened in both of these trials. And um, once again, it's not that there's a failure. This is something we see all the time. It's that the process is working and even though there is a, a huge desire to complete these trials as quickly as possible, uh, safety comes first. Absolutely. All right, COVID-19 is a virus, as are the flu strains. They, flu shots, are made by growing the virus, killing it, and then putting it in an injectable media. What makes the COVID strain so different to take so long? The process is already established, tried, and proven. Well, first of all, the, the COVID virus is a different virus than the, the flu virus, and we don't have all of the experience there that we have with flu. But typically a flu virus vaccine, the, the clinical trials start about three years before that year's flu vaccine is released. So it's not that the um, process is taking longer, the process is actually going much more rapidly. Uh, it's just that we don't have the luxury of planning two years, three years down the road like we do with the development of the flu vaccine each year. So it's actually faster. Our next question is, why is Pfizer testing on kids now? Why would parents let their kids do this? And how do kids become part of the study? Well, obviously, at the end of the day, you want to be sure that the vaccine is safe in all populations. And we want to be able to protect our children with the vaccine, particularly those that have underlying conditions and that are at high risk. But the only way that we can know that it works and that it's safe in children is to actually do those studies in children. This is a two-year study. At least some of them are two-year studies. So if that is the case, why are so many people saying a vaccine could be ready early next year? Well, um, we are all hopeful that a vaccine will be ready either the end of this year or early next year. However, that's not the end of the process. For those people that receive the vaccine, we need to follow them for a period of time so that we know their antibody response is long lasting. We don't know if these vaccines are just gonna work for six months, if they're gonna work for a year, if they're gonna work for two years, how often people are gonna need revaccination, are revaccinations gonna be effective? All of these kind of questions still need to be answered, even though the initial effectiveness question may be answered and um, large numbers of people uh, being vaccinated. Our last question. Many people feel this vaccine is rushed. How long does it usually take for a vaccine to be approved, number one? If it typically takes longer than the estimated time for a COVID-19 vaccine to be developed, why the disparity? Okay, well, a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, it takes uh, anywhere from two to five years, uh, typically to get a vaccine approved. And a large part of that is due to making sure it works at each phase before you go ahead and, and proceed because of the financial consequences uh, as we're developing these. You don't want to spend your resources on vaccines that are not gonna work. So 
we get the results from each phase, then we plan the next one, and it's a, a slow process, but it's one that, that has a higher success rate at the end. With COVID, that concern has been eliminated because of the urgency of getting a vaccine so that the government has stepped in and helped underwrite the cost of this development and has enabled things to move much more rapidly and the focus to be totally on safety as it should be in the beginning as well as the efficacy that's in the later trials that's looking at um, what reduction we actually see in the population. So absolutely it has gone very much quicker. Another part is all the regulatory delays. This is the first priority of all the regulatory authorities around the world. So reviews that normally could take six months uh, now take a few weeks because the, all their resources as much as needed are focused on making COVID the, as rapidly as possible and determining if these vaccines work. And they may not all work. I mean, the plans are that only a portion of the, the vaccines that are in um, Operation Warp Speed are actually going to be effective enough to get approved. That's why having all of these different mechanisms, different types of COVID vaccines being investigated at the same time is so important. Absolutely. Well, we will all be watching this process, but Dr. Smith, thank you for your insight and thank you for your time. We appreciate you. My pleasure.